My name is Michael Fields. I'm with MSF Enterprises. We're an investment banking firm um, here in Denver, Colorado. And a lot of what we do is we work on helping put together businesses, um, do mergers and acquisitions, um, raise capital for hedge funds, private, um, private equity funds, and venture capital groups, and also um, advise certain family offices on their investment policies. Um, I mean, basically a lot of what we focus on are the alternative sides of the marketplace. So we have been very uh, cognizant of shadow banking over the last 10 years and how a lot of alternative investment management firms have been focusing and doing a lot of the things that investment banks, insurance companies, uh, trust companies, and traditional banks have been doing and been providing um, an opportunity to be able to do direct financing for companies and provide returns for investors. So what we really have been focusing on the last 10 years is been able to raise, help those firms raise capital and really provide a whole other layer of um, capital to the um, growing marketplace and capital marketplace. Um, no, it's been going well. I mean, I think the marketplace has changed significantly in the last 10 years, particularly with uh, interest rates uh, lowering significantly. Institutional investors have been looking for other ways to be able to make um, higher rates of return. Uh, interest rates 10 years ago were 8.5%. Uh, now they're at 1.5%. Um, historically, they've always been a large part of their, uh, part of their portfolio. So um, they've had to educate themselves in terms of other ways to be able to invest and find rates, better rates of return. The alternative investment um, community has also been f able to fall into place where um, in the hedge fund community 10 years ago, the average size or the community was roughly about um, $400 billion, and now it's $2.6 trillion and all the alternative community and across the, um, the private equity funds, hedge funds, and venture capital groups, they're close to about $6.5 trillion now. So there's been a lot of growth. They've been able to step up and be in a place to be able to help finance and grow the capital markets. Well, we started um, about a year ago. We started doing some research, and one of the reasons of even kind of relocating out here from New York was seeing that Colorado is a, has a lot of great um, opportunities here. It's one of the markets that was kind of missed with the growth in the last, I'd say, five, ten years, where you've been seeing areas like Chicago, San Francisco, LA, Dallas, um, becoming secondary mar um, mar asset management market hubs. Um, color okay. <coughs> um, so in terms of, uh, we've been seeing that there's been a lot of opportunity that's been growing in the last ten years in a number of the markets out here. Um, or this, the tertiary markets in Dallas, San Francisco, LA, and it seems like Denver kind of missed that, that wave. And the opportunity here is that there's a good asset management background, and so the name of the, uh, the initiative that we've been working on is the Golf Gulch Initiative. And the whole idea is to be able to attract more asset management firms here so um, they can also, so Colorado as a whole could be a bigger asset management hub and also attract more institutional investment dollars here to invest and have it also trickle in, trickle down through the rest of the economy. Uh, it's going well. Um, we've met with the governor's office. We've met with um, the heads of all the universities uh, over at DU, uh, CSU, um, CU, all the business schools. They're all involved. We've been really starting our efforts more towards the private sector as well, talking to the existing asset management firms and really trying to figure out what brought them out here originally. But um, everyone is pretty, pretty supportive of the initiative and they also would like to see Colorado transform from more of a mutual fund community to really an asset management hub. And so what, would re what that would require is to really be able to get more critical scale, to be able to attract the institutional dollars, to be able to come out here, meet with the managers, know that there's portfolio management teams out here, and you know, feel comfortable with them to be able to raise, uh, to be able to manage their capital for them. Um, well, we started originally from a research perspective and really wanted to make sure what, you know, what are, um, if our thesis made sense. So we did a lot of um, talking to people and really trying to figure out, you know, what, what was the history of the, the, the growth here and ultimately what, what, is the, what would make the community um, successful to be able to, you know, if it made sense, does the community want it? And so we really started probably for about eight months talking to the community and then really in the last eight months we've also been doing a lot of networking talking to people about it and really trying to get people behind it because ultimately it wasn't so much meant to be our initiative but really something that the um, whole community could really own, be part of. And so one of the next steps of where we've kind of gone was um, after having spoken to the governments, uh, the government officials, the, um, the uh, heads of the universities here and also the private sector, is to also put together a competition because um, if we could get the, um, the government um, 
uh, body to essentially sponsor a competition for what would Colorado look like if it had five trillion in assets under management. And the reason we chose that number was currently we figure there's about eight hundred billion dollars currently being managed. Two two trillion is roughly <coughs> what you need to get to be critical mass. And five trillion would really make it a self sustaining marketplace that will continue to grow and thrive through the years over the next decade to the next two decades. We think by 2016, 2000, between 2016 and 2018, and the reason we kind of, you know, putting it out for, um, anywhere from five to eight years is right now passively with $800 billion out here, um, no one's really kind of packaged and marketed it. If we start getting some sort of initiative and really create that tipping point, we think that it can be about five to six times what it currently is. And, you know, really what the initiative is to be able to attract existing asset management firms to be able to move and put portfolio managers here to be able to, to manage assets. There's a good pool of capital here. There's a good uh, university system. Um, there's a good talent pool of CFAs and portfolio managers. So it's really just kind of putting us on the map so we can really grow through the years. Um, <coughs> impact investing from, from what m uh, my understanding is, it's, I mean, it makes a lot of sense in terms of really the whole idea is being able to look for not only investing your dollars, but also looking to be able to create some sort of impact, some sort of change, um, and also be able to influence policies on the numbers of the companies of where your investment dollars go. So it makes sense. Um, I mean, I think the biggest question um, for a number of people are they don't want to be able to give away, they don't want to have to invest if it's going to be affecting returns. The last five years in particular, it's been um, very difficult to be able to make returns for the, uh, for your in, for the investment community. So um, if it's a question of giving up returns for, um, for with consciousness, it, it's more, it, it's going to take a little bit of education. And I think that a lot of the good companies that are already, you know, using these, enacting a lot of these principles to be able to create better impact and um, make sure that everyone's, um, make sure that the CEOs of these companies are doing the right things, creating jobs, not doing, um, not hiring, um, you know, affecting child labor laws or lead in paints and a lot of other things that um, for even for LED um, investing in terms of their buildings. So I think the more that there's a larger consciousness in terms of, you know, that you can do good as well as make good returns, um, it's just that people have to know that they can do both. And so, you know, it's an exciting initiative because I think that there's um, going to be a major impact, um, no pun intended, in terms of where um, the community is going, but it just needs to kind of be out there and really, you know, be you have to educate both sides, both the investment population as well as the uh, the C CEOs, and know that they can also do better things and also make more money for their investors that way. Um, I think it's education. I think at the end of the day, you know, they've most um, institutional investors and most um, investment managers and portfolio managers have all have always been trained to <coughs> to really look. Um, for the best returns, uh, making sure that the companies are um, doing what they have to do from um, from managing the company, but not so much not so much what's their what uh, are the firms being conscientious in terms of how they're doing what they're doing, and I think that the more even the institutional investors and the portfolio managers are really looking and adding that to their filter, I think that there can be. Um, and it's just going to be another screen that people can really look at companies and who are doing the best practices and how can other companies also impact, um, make the same sort of uh, influencing of their, uh, how they're running their businesses and also making better, um, making better decisions to be able to create, um, you know, to be a stronger part of the impacting investment, you know, phenomena. Um, no, I've been basically in the alternative um, asset management industry for the last 15 years, actually for the bulk of maybe 15 to 20 years um, of my career. And so um, how, it, how it could be affected is, you know, you're already starting to see alternatives are now be, becoming more mainstream. Um, there's new packaging, so some of the alternative investment management strategies can also start going to the retail investors. Um, I think really what the opportunity here is to be able to work on both the, the packaging of, you know, what's, uh, of how these alternative investments are getting down to the the main um, down to the um, down to the public, but you know as the as the alternatives are becoming more mainstream, then there's an opportunity for the alternatives to alternatives. And with that being said, you know I think impact investing would just be something that can be an add-on there because a number of investors, and particularly in the last five six years with the whole financial crisis, a lot of the investment community 
has been looking at different ways of um, regaining a better level of um, better relationship with the end investor. And I think that by being able to show that you can make a difference in terms of how you're investing your dollars and investing their dollars and be able to create a difference, um, I think that, that there's definitely a way for, for it to play into the, um, the marketplace and into people's portfolios. Um, and I think the other side of what you're starting to see is everyone's looking for a new story. And I think um, as registered investment advisors and uh, more intermediaries, broker-dealers are looking at ways to communicate to their clients, um, it's, it's something that makes sense. Um, we've seen um, some companies in India um, in terms of microfinance um, that have grown six, um, significantly and successfully through the years um, and really make an impact. You've been seeing um, a lot of these emerging market countries that have been focusing on um, a little bit of that, that impact investing of how to be able to make that social change have also been able to provide returns. So now it's the matter of connecting the case studies and really being able to, I think, equip the registered investment advisors and the broker dealers with um, a good cohesive narrative in terms of how to be able to talk to their clients. Um, and that's where I think that there's an opportunity because ultimately alternatives have basically kind of crept into people's portfolios because of what they were looking at the actuarial tables and how to be able to make returns and look outside the box from the traditional investment strategy of cash fixed income equities. Now as alternatives are coming in, impact investing could really play a role as well. I mean, I've read several studies where impact investing could be as much as 15 to trillion dollars in terms of the marketplace. And it's the matter of just adding a different filter in terms of where, um, where you want your, your dollars to go and be able to make it make that social conscious, that social um, impact of really seeing change. Um, absolutely, I mean, uh, we've worked with uh, several um, private equity firms in the past that would have been working on from both SBC, SBIC, um, Small Business Investment Corp um, structures that uh, have been working uh, where they get a government loan from, they get a, um, a loan from the government and they also raise the equity and they're ma looking for different ways to be able to make direct investments and really help companies, but looking for companies that have that better sense of consciousness. Uh, we've worked with private equity firms that have also been focusing on the financial services areas. Um, and one group in particular, uh, it's a large private equity firm, a group called Aquiline Capital Partners, where their managing partner had been head of an uh, insurance company. And as they're looking globally to be able to deploy their capital, they're looking at different ways of being able to make um, a change in terms of their investing. So um, we're starting to see, it before it was more the realm of trying to figure out what would be a good companies and what would really see, have good growth stories. But I think, you know, there's a couple of companies that we've been talking to recently that have been focusing primarily on um, impact investing and also looking at, um, you know, ways to be able to change the globe with the way that they invest. A group out of uh, uh, San Francisco called Equilibrium Capital Management. Um, they've, you know, one of their partners had been a, a, a Fed board member and they're really looking at investing their capital and being able to find um, different ways to be able to put together a full portfolio across private equity, um, hedge funds, and even mutual fund structures where investors have that opportunity to be able to build out their portfolios and. Um, and they're, part of, they're doing part of the vetting process to make sure that these companies that they're investing in really are looking to make change. Um, <clears throat> I mean, with, particularly with our, um, with our initiative, I mean, I think really that there's an opportunity here in Colorado because um, Colorado just being in the center of, of um, I mean, we've got good access through our airport to be in a number of places, two hours away from the West Coast, Midwest, um, yeah, down in, in the South. Uh, Colorado is really positioned to be a, a place for tremendous growth and I think because of the clean lifestyle, because of um, the universities, because of people liking um, having the mountains in the, back, in the backdrop, the whole idea is that you know, people come, have been coming here for a reason. They like living here and if part of our initiative we can also help draw more impacting invest in investment firms or firms to be able to even open up different areas and arms to their business, just focused on impact investing because there is a little more of a consciousness here. Um, I think that would really, you know, bode well for our initiative. And again, as our as our goal is to be able to try to bring five trillion dollars in assets out here, um, having uh, having Colorado be the center of the impact investing world would really um, would really be able to be a great initiative where we can think that we can make, help make a difference.